Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining. Um, I'm glad you've been able to attend this. We have a great webinar coming to you today. We've titled it Selling in a Post-Pandemic World, Technology, and what we want to focus on today is discussing and helping you understand what adaptations you need to make. What technologies do you need to start using that you're not using currently? The world has changed. We've been locked in for a long time. It seems like 17 years. I know it's only been a month or so, but the world has changed. People have learned they can do things differently. They can use online video. They can use an online process to buy things. And so that's going to spread into all aspects of society, and it's really going to spread into the selling process. People are, are going to be resistant at first to face-to-face -face contact for a while, if not changed forever. Um, look what 9-11 did to us. We, you know, we changed how we operate in airports and how we travel. This is going to have some similar fallout along the way. Um, so we need to understand there are different ways to do it. We can successfully sell. We can do what we've always done, just understand in some ways it's going to be different. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So why are we doing these webinars? We're doing them because we want to help. We want to offer insights. We want to help you improve. We're not charging for these. These are um, complimentary webinars. We don't have any expectations out of them only that we give you good information, that we give you good insights that you can actually walk away with and use. Um, if you haven't done so already, please download the workbook. I have put the link to the workbook. I believe it's in this corner over here. Um, if you would just go ahead and download that um, to use, it'll help you take notes. It'll help you to remember what we talked later. And then finally, if you do have any questions, I'll put the information to contact us at the end of the webinar. You can put it in the chat box, and we will answer those questions as we go. We will answer those questions um, down the fact, or you can actually call us. So my promise to you in the next 45 minutes or so, you're going to learn how to navigate the challenges with technology you will face. It's not if, it's not maybe you are going to face technology challenges. You're going to have to adapt new ways of doing things. Um, I'm, I don't want to be one of those scaremongers. I don't want to be one of those persons that, that tells you that it, you know, if you don't, you're going to shrivel up but you are going to have to make some modifications to how you do business. So that's what we're going to work with on you today. And I promise you're going to walk away with information. So I'd like to introduce our panel. First of all, I am Mark Banfield. I'm a 30 year sales expert, automotive industry at all levels. Secondly, I've got Mark Shinneberry, a 25 plus year sales expert, industry expert. Um, Mark and I have been friends for a long time. Third, we have Mike Mersman, a 30 year leasing and sales expert. Uh, Mike knows his stuff when it comes to leasing, when it comes to automobile uh, process. Next, Ron Catrania. Ron is an over 30 year sales expert, motivational speaker. Ron uh, has so much information. Every time I talk to him, I learn more. Pay attention to when he talks. Alex Thayer is an automotive dealer for over 20 years. Um, if you're in the Midwest, you may very rec well recognize that last name. Um, Alex has got extensive knowledge of dealership operations, sales processes, and he understands what it takes to change. Finally, we're honored to have Xavier Salazar, a JMNA Senior District Manager. Um, Xavier's going to give us all of the insights on how the F&I process, how the finance department um, is making changes and will continue to make changes and move us forward. Um, as we continue to go. So that's our panel of experts. So um, on the first page of your workbook, it talks about um, challenges with technology. We do have a new normal coming at us. The, we're going to have to um, handle leads. We're going to have to do live video. We're going to have to do canned video. Um, but it's going to be changed. It's a new normal. So the basic process does remain the same. You're still going to sell using the same process, the greeting, the finding the customer's needs, the giving the proper product, overcoming objections to negotiating. What we want to make sure you understand is how you interact with this customer through those steps is what's going to change. The media is going to change. It may not be face-to-face. -face. Now, 
this is not for all customers. Some customers are still going to want to come through the door, want to sit across the desk from you, are going to be more comfortable with that. But more and more customers, um, and, and whether we talk about the younger generation, it's not always that. It's older people too, but more and more people are going to want the video interaction, are going to want the non-live face-to-face, at least for part, if not all, of the process. And the question is, are you ready for that? When your doors reopen here, if they haven't already soon, are you ready to handle those customers that are going to tell you, I don't want to come in. I want to talk to you over Zoom. I want to talk to you over whatever media you're using. And then the other question is, do you even know where to start to deal with this, to handle this? So what we did was we made a self-analysis. If you turn to page two in your workbook, I'm sorry, page, yep, page two in your workbook, you actually see a self-assessment. And we'd like you to take the time right now to assess yourself. How are you doing? We've given you a scale of one to five. One being the worst, basically you don't have it or you're just beginning. Five means you're pretty much an expert, willing to learn more, but you think you've got it down pretty well. So how would you rate yourself on your website on how it operates? Does it do a good job of capturing people, getting people's attention when they come in? When they start looking for vehicles, does it drive them to the right places? Does it drive them to an individual vehicle page where you then can capture their information, drive them to contact you in another way. Um, there are dealers out there that one of the things that I think is going to change is the need to be very transparent. I know a lot of dealer websites in the past have said, contact us to get the internet price. That's not going to fly anymore. Customers aren't going to like that. They're gonna, if they see that, they're going to log off and go to some place where they can get the price right online. So you're going to have to be honest with your pricing and you're going to have to be honest with the customers giving it to them. So how does your website perform on a scale of one to five? What about handling internet customer leads? How do you rate yourself there? So the customer sends you a lead over the internet. You're capturing it pretty much, I'm guessing, by way of email, maybe by a website chat. So once you start that process, how are you doing handling that? Are you paying attention to how the customer is requesting they want to communicate with you further? Or are you still trying to drive them from that immediately to get them to come into the store physically? That's going to have to change. You need to think about that. But how are you doing right now on a scale of one to five? Next, your phone system. How does your phone system, and I'm talking about the landline, the number that comes into the dealership, how does that work for you? Do you have someone that answers the phone? Do you have a, uh, a policy that the phone gets answered within two rings? Or does someone, can someone call in and if the receptionist, or if you don't have a receptionist, is not there, does it just ring and ring and ring because no one takes the time to answer it? Does your phone capture numbers? Does it allow easy navigation of your, your voice prompts? Um, how does your phone system operation work? How would you rate yourself there? What about the use of texting or instant messaging? Again, this is a new world. Some people don't want the video. Some people don't want a phone call. They want to text. They want the whole communication to be text. Are you able, do you know how to do that? Because again, it's a different process. Building relationship, quoting numbers, doing that all over text takes a very defined process that you need to work at and your salespeople need to practice. Instant messaging, whether it's through Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever instant messaging service, Marco Polo, um, that you're going to use, are you adept at using it and do you understand the parameters that it takes? What about online video? And by online video, I mean, do you have recorded walk-arounds of your vehicles on your website? Do you have recorded test drives? Do you have... Um, video messages on your website page or is everything static images? Customers like video. They want to see video. Are you using that? And then the next question separate, what about live video? This, are you able, are you capable, willing to talk to a customer through live video? Now, that may require you to get cameras for your desktop computers. It may require you for your salespeople to have a phone that they can use the process. Um, whatever it takes, are you ready to do live video interaction with your customers? And how are you right now on a scale of one to five? 
What about the virtual paperwork, the virtual F&I? So we've had for a long time the ability for customers to give a credit app over the, over the internet. Not a problem. But what about the rest of the paperwork? Can they sign their documents remotely? Can you, your F&I managers, your finance managers, can they present their products, whether you, they're using a process or a menu or whatever system they're using, can they effectively do it online? And if they can't, again, that's something that's going to have to change. And then finally, on a scale of one to five, what about offsite deliveries? Are you using them? Have you considered them? If you are using them, do you feel it's an effective process? Do you have it nailed? Are your salespeople, are the people delivering the vehicles capable of going over that vehicle, giving the customer the right delivery process so that you can continue to get good ratings on your CSI? So how do you rate yourself on a scale of one to five? So I'll give you a second to make sure you've got those numbers, and then I want you to tally them up. So take a moment, and I'll let you do that. Nobody said there was going to be a math test. <laughs> yeah, math. Uh, yeah, again, I tried to limit the number of questions. There's only eight questions, only five points per question. Okay. So then based on your final score, you've got a grading scale down below. So if you rated below a 25, okay, you really, you know, you're, you're honest with yourself. You understand that you're needing things, and that's probably why it would drove you to get information from events like this. If you're in that middle between 26 and 34, again, you're doing some things well. You're doing some things that may need some help. You understand, though, and you're willing to learn. Okay, so you're trying. You're moving in the right direction, um, and you're willing to learn. So keep that up. Keep that attitude. Keep adapting to the future. Finally, if you're above a 35, congratulations, you're doing a great job. But again, you're here, so you do understand there's always room for improvement. There's always growth, and there's always stuff that you can learn. So keep doing that. In all of those cases, we have great information that's coming your way um, with this webinar. So without any further ado, with me talking, because I'm getting parched and tired of talking, Let's start talking about technology and the concept of a deal. And we're going to start with that initial customer contact by way of what technologies we do use and assuming that the customer wants to do video. And for that, I'm going to bring my panel up on the screen. Welcome, guys. I'm Hello. glad you're tired of me talking. Probably happy that I'm going to stop here. But to start us off talking about live video, the live video interaction, I'm going to go to Mark first. So, Mark, give me your thoughts on, on what they need to do, what's going on with live video. Thanks, Mark. So, I think about this. When someone's reaching out to you, trying to sell you something, predominantly at the dealership, right? Someone's sending you an email, they're calling you. If you get an email with a video, chances are you're more likely to look at it. You're more likely to open it. You may even watch the entire video. If it grabs your attention, you will watch the entire video. Your customer's no different. Everyone's calling them back when they click for information. Uh, many people are, most of them are sending emails. Include a video with that. And that initial response, because they're gonna, they're gonna open it more often and they're going to see value in that video. And preferably, a, a personalized video. Okay. So great. Very, very good point because I was thinking in the context of a face to face interaction like this, you're talking about even replying to the email and adding a video to that email, right? A absolutely. Because so they, you know, traditionally, it, and it's no different today, a customer is on your website or a third party lead provider, they click for information. You respond usually with an email right away, um, usually automatically generated. Then you follow up with a phone call or maybe a personalized email, and that personalized email should include a personalized video introduction of yourself to get separate you from everybody else, engage with that customer, and get them to respond. And then try to set up that face-to-face -face video interaction like we're doing here right now. 
that's the big thing that's lost right now is the face-to-face -face interaction um, with the customer. And that's what uh, puts yourself above uh, your competition, the other salespeople or other dealerships. Um, when people call in, uh, a sale, a customer calls into a dealership, the, the goal of that phone call is to get the customer into the store. But that's changed now. Um, you still have to set an appointment, but I think you're, the, the salespeople who are able to set an appointment for a video chat uh, will be able to establish rapport much quicker with that customer, resulting in uh, more sales. Right. That's right. Ron, I want to, I'm sorry. I want to turn to Ron real quick, Ron. So doing video over the internet like this is similar to personal interaction, but it's different. So how do you develop a relationship with someone through video, through well, this online? Well, the first thing I would tell people is practice with it. Have some fun. Call your family, call your friends. Become natural so you can speak with them without umming and ahhing or this, that, and you know, all, those, all those words you use that are extraneous. Talk direct to the individual. You're trying to build a relationship that is a bit long distance. You don't have that eye contact when you're not face to face. You have it when you're face to face. When you're on a video, you've got to learn to train yourself to look at the camera. Make sure you're looking at the camera. When you're looking at the camera, you're looking at them. If you're not looking at the camera, you're talking at them, not to them. So it becomes critical that you develop that and make it personal. I would take a few minutes discussing things with your customer that has nothing to do with the sale of the automobile or whatever you're trying to sell. Try to build that relationship first. You know, one of the books that I read was, you know, by different people, one by Bill Fromm. It's called The Ten Commandments of Business and How to Break Them. Excellent book. But what you've got to do is you've got to start building a relationship that starts long term and it starts, it starts long distance. So talk with the customer, talk to the customer, gather what's important to them, find out what drives their emotion. What are they looking to accomplish? Where are you in your search, in your quest for a vehicle? What stage are you at? Did you just start? Have you been doing it for a while? Are you ready to make a decision? Because people are going to shop around. You know, they go down what I call Education Boulevard. They're going to go from dealership to dealership to dealership and gather information until they got all their information. Then they go in to buy. So you may not be the first stop. You may not, you, you, I want to be the last stop. So you, what you want to do is give them the feeling that they can trust you. They respect you. You got to be memorable. So that when, they, when they think about you, they go, I remember that guy. He was the real nice guy, the real friendly guy. And they go back to you. Don't make it so formal. Make it a little less formal. And, uh, you know, consider your audience. Who are you speaking to? What are you speaking to them about? Always communicate clearly. Make sure that you're speaking and you're enunciating perfectly. You know, there's no misinterpretation when it's face-to-face. -face. When we talk about another communication with text, there can be some dangers there. Right now, talk sincere, talk from the heart, and, and look at this customer as if you're trying to build a relationship. Don't look at them as a bag of groceries, a quick hit. You're looking at them as someone that's going to come back over and over and over again. I don't want to sell you one car. I want to sell you many cars. I want to sell your family. You know, so there's a lot of material out there, and I tend to be a big reader. Right now, my library's thin because I just donated about 700 books to a, a place down here in South Florida that rebuilds lives. But, you know, Carl Sewell, Village Cadillac, Dallas, Texas, excellent book, Customers for Life. Those things you want to read, those things you want to learn from, and just simply apply it. But be a person. Don't be someone that even though you're long distance, you're, you're shallow. Be there, be open, be wide open, smile, get your teeth showing. And, and you're extending your hand through the monitor, through the monitor. And people love that. They want to, we've, in our high tech society, we've lost high touch. Reach out, touch your customer, be sincere, be enthusiastic. You know, the letters of the word, I-A-S-M, I am sold myself. In order for you to sell your products successfully, you have got to be sold on it. 
So if you're not, people are going to, going to see that and they're going to move on. Very nice. Good job. Great words, Ron. I like that. I, I am sold myself. Good thing to remember. Um, on this initial topic, I'm going to turn now to Mike Mersman. Mike, what are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, Ron pretty much nailed it right there. The one thing I want to piggyback on, which is, I think, extremely important. Ron mentioned about practice and get used to the technology. It's really simple. The reason you want to do that is because the more automatic it becomes with you, the more you can extend yourself, your person, your personality, uh, your smile, everything that makes you you, and nobody's better at it than you. The more you practice with this and get used to it, the easier it's going to be for the person you're trying to communicate with to connect with you. It's extremely important because all the best technology in the world really won't do us any good if we are not good at using it. And that's, that's, really, that's my two bits. Yeah, yeah Mike, you're absolutely right. You know, I think uh, I'm sure that we've got some sports fans here. Oh. And uh, I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. Sorry about it if you guys are in other places. But, you know, a professional football team will practice. Do you know that an average football player will practice 1,000 hours to play 15 minutes of football? You know, a football game, you may think it's three hours of television time. From snap to whistle, it's 60 minutes. I mean, not snap to whistle. Clock time is 60 minutes. Snap to whistle, 15 minutes, 41 seconds. So you've got to practice. Like right now, we're fumbling. We don't know what we're doing exactly. We don't have the science down to that nth degree. We're making mistakes. But we're learning from each other. We're learning as we go forward. And little by little, we're going to execute perfectly. Very nice. Very true. Uh, yeah, can, yeah, I, I can I piggyback on that just for a second? Sure. sure. Again, um, yeah, I like the football analogy. Uh, my little boy played college football. And if they came back and said, you know, you're going to practice pretty much the year round for one play. The one play averages eight seconds. And that's something. So you just got to go, man. You just got to – it. it may not take long. But the pros practice, if you're going to expect to do well in this industry, you better be a pro and you better practice. Exactly. Are we talk about saying when you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you're right. That's right. right. I don't want to be that, you know, I don't want to be the low-hanging fruit. I want to be that mm -hmm. robust, that robust fruit that's hanging thick on the vine. I hear you. Nice. All right. So one last, before I go to Xavier, Xavier, real quick, to, to get his thoughts on this. Football, again, practice. You guys talk about practicing, and the pros even practice. Um, one of my favorite stories is Vince Lombardi. At every start of every camp, he would walk in. The team's all there, and he would hold up a football and say, gentlemen, this is a football because you got to start at the basics. Any questions? <laughs> don't know what the football is. That's where we got to start. All right, so, Xavier, what are your thoughts on the, 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 live, the video process? Well, absolutely, like everyone said, um, and to just add to what Mike and Ron said, practicing is the number one key to overcoming your fears, because the number one fear in the industry right now is the fear of technology. Can I use it? Am I going to be good at it? Am I going to mess up? I'm going to tell you something, guys. You are going to mess up. You're going to fall flat on your face, but that's how you're going to learn. And the only way you're going to overcome all of that, communicate with your customer. Over-communicate. When you grab that phone, uh, make sure that you measure their temperature in terms of technology. Find out where they're at. And if they are able to do the video, please, like everyone said in this panel, take advantage of it. Sell yourself. Make sure they see the value of what you see the value of. That, that's all I got to say. Guys. Yeah, sell yourself. So important, isn't it, Xavier? You got to sell yourself before you sell your product. <laughs> all the time. All the time. I got to tell you. I got to remind my wife. Yeah. <laughs> so, segueing from live technology to recorded video. All right? So, um, by recorded video, what I'm talking about, what I'm referring to are, do you have available for your customers video walkarounds? Do you have video test drives, 
for the vehicle that they're looking at on the website. So I'm going to go to Alex on this because, you know, from the dealer world and, and he's really got an intimate knowledge of that. So Alex, what are the challenges with that part of video? Um, the having a recorded video, uh, there's a lot of um, things you can incorporate for dealership processes. One is um, the, the trade-in video. So trade-ins are going to change a little bit. Um, because the customer can't come into the dealership as readily. So part of a, a trade-in is uh, having the customer um, do a, uh, a walk around or, or getting the, the vehicle's condition to the, the used car manager. So having a video posted somewhere where you can point the customer to to say, here's the information we need uh, from your trade-in. Um, and just a resource on your dealership for the customers. How are you cleaning your vehicles now uh, post-COVID processes? Um, uh, so videos on that and just reassuring the customer how the dealership processes work um, and a resource for salespeople to point um, uh, customers to as, as a new way of introduction of the dealership to the customer because the, the showrooms are closed or, or severely reduced. Okay. So we're now, that, that's, that's outstanding. And that's very true because again, over the, the internet, the trade-in still exists, right? And you, you have to deal with it. So I'm going to kind of blur two topics together here. So I want to start talking about, this has been brought up already, but text messaging and instant messaging and how that needs to work, but still remember that there's video out there and we can do video through this process. So I'm going to start with uh, Xavier on this, actually. So Xavier, using text messaging for a salesperson or, or instant messaging for a salesperson to not only communicate, but to do things like a walk around of their product for the customer, a test drive of their product. So how do we blend that together? And what does it take for the dealership to do that successfully? Well, the good news is that in terms of resources, resources, it takes very little. Uh, I would say uh, in terms of technology resources, it would take probably a cell phone, you know, and maybe a YouTube channel that we all know it could be free, right? But at the end of the day, what's going to take is the willingness of uh, a couple of people doing it and doing it well. Now, the only reason why we have to rely on text messaging nowadays, because the open rate of text messaging is 98%. Uh, True Card uh, made a white paper a couple of days ago, and they actually came up with the fact that 98% of customers open their text messages. So it's a good thing because that means that that could be the initial channel of communication. But to your point, guys, let's use that open rate. And if we're going to add a link, let's make sure that link is pristine. I mean, that we're going to catch the attention. As we know, you're going to have very few seconds in today's instant gratification world that we live in right so you're going to have very few minutes we have instagram to compete against facebook and so many other cool people that are doing cool things right now that is not you so make sure that when you have that link that you offer all the value that you can offer on that product but again it's very simple to do it but the willingness and the energy to do it that's the one thing that we need to practice on Okay. Uh, Mark, going to you. Um, do you think salespeople in today's world still know how to do effective walk-arounds? Just at the basis, just, just that question. Boy, that's a loaded question. It is, but I think it's because my, the, the reason I'm asking is to do a video walk-around, you got to be able to do an effective person to per, face-to-face walk-around, right? So, so let, let's talk about that. I'm going to go back to what Ron and yeah. what Mike said, practice, practice, <laughs> practice. And unfortunately, the majority of the salespeople out there in our industry don't practice. They don't practice enough. Um, and I, I think we're all guilty of that. We all need to practice everything that we do, right? We need to, we need to practice. As a matter of fact, let's talk about that. We, we had to practice using this technology before we were successful in doing this webinar, right? Because, and, and we're still not perfect. So to answer your question, 
Yes and no. <clears throat> yeah, very nice. Mike, think, about, think about what a doctor says. You know, a doctor owns a practice. Yes. You know, now well, you, you go to a doctor and you go, excuse me, are you still practicing or do you know how to do this surgery? <laughs> you know, so we have to be a doctor of selling. And being That's a right. doctor of selling means can we execute? Can we open up that deal? Could we examine and close that deal efficiently? Right. Very nice. Mike, you laughed when I asked about the walk around question. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. No, I don't want to dwell on that, but so for a salesperson to do, is it necessary? Do you think it's important for them to be able to do video walk arounds, either Absolutely. with the customer or record them? Absolutely it is. Yeah. And and you have to look at it from one standpoint. You're at work to work. You're working to make money. And if you're regardless if you're paid commission or if you're paid a salary, um, don't you want to be the best you can be? And I don't want to do an ad for the Army, but um, it's important that you do that. The more you practice, the better you get at being you. And I can't stress that enough. The more you are you without reservations, the more you're going to connect with other people. And it's just, a, it's just an expression of yourself through the airways. Um, it, it's so valuable. If you can't do it, if you can't communicate, you can't sell. Thank you very much. So let me follow up a question on that, Mike. So I agree, you got to practice, right? Yeah. Um, and there's the old saying, practice doesn't make perfect, but practice makes permanent. So you have to practice the right way. Absolutely. Right? But is just merely doing something over and over and over, is that practicing something? Uh, no, um, that's, just, that's just making it a habit. Okay. okay. What, what you need in a situation like that is you need, a, you need somebody to aspire to. You need a, a level that you want to reach, and you need typically a coach, a book, a mentor, a something that will help you and push you to get to where you want to be. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to do it on your own. Okay. Xavier, you were shaking your head or you agreed with Mike there. Do you want to follow up? Oh, 10,000%. I mean, I think that nowadays, you know, we need someone to help us at least to track our performance. Uh, I'm a true believer that nowadays we have to get paid for what we produce. Uh, we are definitely walking into a new normal in terms of the business, right? So we need to be ready ourselves uh, as, as, as just the professionals that we are in our careers. No matter what happens in the next 60 or 90 days, technology is here. Whether the market is in an upswing, downswing, middle swing, if this is what we're going to choose to do for a living sales, no matter what, technology is here, guys. And whether it's a car business, home business, or any type of sales that you want to do in today's economy. Technology is here to stay. And, and to bring your point, guys, practice, practice, practice to become better on what you do. I think it's important, too, with, with the practicing, the dealership um, needs to be able to establish a consistent process for text, for video, um, for the salespeople to follow. Uh, the, the dealership... Uh, they can get a, um, a user-friendly pl platform along with good processes. They're going to be able to have their salespeople establish that, uh, that salesperson-customer relationship a lot quicker than dealerships that don't have uh, a process for their salespeople to practice drill and rehearse. Right. Okay. So I want to kind of the, – the, the next topic in this whole thing is where we, we've now used the, the technology and the process. We've picked the product. We've gotten the vehicle – we're ready to do the, the paperwork and the delivery now. So I'm going to skip paperwork for the moment and go right to the delivery. So if we're going to deliver the vehicle remotely, it's important that the people delivering it, if, if you don't have a salesperson to deliver the vehicle, you have a delivery specialist drive the car to the customer, deliver it to them. That person has to be trained in the process, trained in the paperwork, but at that point in time, if it's not the salesperson, you have to build a relationship. So I'm going to turn to Ron in this here. So Ron, if you've got a person, salesperson or not, doing a remote delivery, 
how important or, or what needs to happen to make it a successful delivery well, when they right have now, such a short window? Yeah. Well, right now there's companies out there that flatbed the truck to your house, drop it off in the front of your house or your driveway, and uh, have, have you sign a couple of documents and off they go. They're not delivery specialists. You need to have acquainted the customer with this customer in advance. They'll go to the car with this customer in advance. So they know what to expect. And keep in mind, today the technology from brand to brand and warranties and everything else that goes along with it are so similar. It really is. I mean, if you, you know, how many different warranties are there? You know, how many different products are there? It does years ago, I think you could have said argument where the Japanese product was a superior product. Not anymore. The American brands are just as good, are just as high quality. Warranties are the same. You can get extended service agreements. You know, there's so many things you can do. I think that you need to do a, you know, you may have a, a dealer's delivery uh, sheet and you go through it with your customer, you have them sign it. I think you do that, you review that with them online. The car is going to be coming to your house, dropped off in your driveway. My technician is going to ask you to an initial this document. Please look it over. Make sure that what I've written down is what we've discussed and send it back with the driver. You know, just again, try and keep it more intimate. I know you're dealing long, you're dealing long distance, but you want to have them feel close to you. Let me interject here for a second, Ron. Think about how perfect it would be. You're my customer. We just went through the uh, virtual walk around. We we're taught now. We're talking about the numbers. I can put the numbers right up on the screen, just like Mark was sharing the uh, presentation earlier. We could share the numbers right on the screen. You agree to a purchase price, and I ask Xavier, our finance specialist or F nine manager, whatever you want to call him, to uh, join us right on the video, the virtual meeting. And to your point. Then, then we have that delivery company deliver the car. Just think about how smooth and how perfect that could be. All these things we're talking about are going to take a learning curve. You're not going to be perfect at it. We're not perfect at this just yet, but we're going to improve. The more you execute, execute the better you become. It becomes more natural. Now, if you remember, there's been some books written um, that talked about unconscious competence, conscious competence. I'm, I'm sure you've written, you've written things like that or you've read things like that. And uh, we're going to be consciously incompetent for a little while. As we learn more and more, we're going to go from that conscious incompetence to unconscious competence and be able to execute perfectly. So don't be afraid to screw up. I mean, you're going to screw up <coughs> whether you, you, you're not. But that's okay. You'll learn. I'm not going to do the same thing again. I'll improve that process, but take a risk, jump in with both feet, use the technology, and I'm sure you're going to have a great time. Now, think about how many people you could speak to. Um, in an in-person contact, you could speak to maybe two, two and a half a day. You could reach more people remotely than you ever could in person. Absolutely right. So, Turning now to our finance specialist, Xavier of JMA, Jim Moran and Associates. Um, Xavier, talk to us about how the whole um, finance, the FI process works virtually, digitally. Well, definitely it's, it's new rules of engagement, like I call it, right? Uh, to you guys, in terms of the process, has not changed. But definitely uh, we are recommending everyone to have over communication. We do have to pick up the phone first. We need to find out where the customer is, uh, like I said earlier, in terms of technology. What do they have available for us to communicate with them, right? Can we do an e-signature? Can we do an e-contract? So just because you're completely equipped with everything that you need to deliver the process, that doesn't mean that your finance manager is going to be able to do it 100% of the time. Uh, they need to rely on where the customer is at and that's something that most dealers are going to need to get used to, that even though they're going to make that investment on their departments with all these e-contract e-signing, we also need to make sure that we catch up with the market. But having said that, there's going to be definitely cons, right? Um, things that um, 
are not going to be in our favor. And one of them is the technology. <laughs> and I would say fear of the technology, but it could be very easily overcome by having that communication with the customer, right? Most customers, as we know, probably 20% in the car industry are okay doing this transaction. 80% of customers are not. So I would say that let's make sure that we do that. Uh, but the, the benefits, like Ron was saying, and everybody else is saying, oh my God, we're just finding out so many. Matter of fact, we're starting to see that people who are embracing the changes are actually having an increase in PVR and in product sales. One of the reasons being we're teaching them, just like you guys are saying, to have a more consulting approach with the customer. Not like the old school, hey, come into the office, we're going to tell you what time it is. And deliver or not, that approach alone has made customers be more perceptive of what they're offering. In addition to that, it's going to take any distractions away. Most of our business managers who are happen to be listening or e dealers will agree that most of the business managers are going to say, well, they keep on distracting me. They keep on rushing me. Uh, they keep on throwing a deal or whatever. The good news is that when you're doing this, just like we're doing right now, we're focused in the person in the camera. And at the same time, if you're going to be able to use the technology, like we said earlier, you might be able to use the background like we're using right now to put pictures of you know, the products and any other things to enhance the value of the customer. In addition to that, you're going to be able to do most of the paperwork before they come for the actual delivery. And that right there is going to be a benefit for the dealership because now the sales managers are not going to be, hey, man, why is it taking three hours to sign paperwork? Because the customer, by the time they come to the uh, uh, finance, I mean, to the dealership, 95% of the paperwork is going to be signed. All they're going to need to sign is just the DMV, in which we need wet signatures for a couple of papers, but then life is good. So what we're trying to say is that as of now, work with what you have. Communicate with your business managers. You need to work together. Communication between the sales desk and the business managers is crucial nowadays. And actually, for everyone, paperwork, yes. Please get the paper for these guys. Um, they have to overcome a lot more objections nowadays. They are a lot more afraid than before. Uh, E-signature, E-this, E-that, before they were in control, right? They had their own office where they could, they could have control of everything. A lot of those things are going to go away, so the, the shifting culture is going to be a lot for you uh, finance managers. So once again, guys, if you need help with all of that, you have the panel, you have the links. Please contact us. We're more than happy to guide you in how to make sure that they know how to use the technology and also how to adapt the processes they currently have so they can improve uh, moving forward. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So, um, Xavier, uh, as far as um, does it matter what – let me think how to phrase this. Do all of the major financial institutions – have a process in place to allow a virtual contract. Absolutely. Matter of fact, uh, Dealer Track was one of the ones who uh, was kind of like falling back a little bit. But in the past three, four years, they have gone full force. Matter of fact, Dealer Track has partnered with another company, and I would actually uh, ask you guys to do your own research. And the reason why they did it, because they couldn't do it on their own. So they can move forward faster going to the technology and making sure that we do these more remotely. So I, I, absolutely, yes. All the companies right now are capable to do it. They have free seminars. Please make sure if you have any of these things in your store, do an internal uh, inventory of what you have before you start asking things that you might probably are already paying for, but your people might not be using. So that's something we're finding out right now with a few of our dealerships. <laughs> They're like, oh, I had that. I'm like, yeah, man, you just haven't used it. So do an internal inventory of what you have so that way you can start using the, the tools that you can currently have before you start increasing more uh, your expenses. That's the only advice I would give. Okay. So looking at the chat box, um, there's a question that popped up. So, and I'll put this to the group. So whoever starts talking first can answer this. But the, the, the question is, do we have a recommendation for or a preference for a video communication channel? 
I would. No. I, well, sorry, can I answer that? You, sure. Yeah, you can start. So I would say no, but unfortunately, things have changed in the past week. As you guys know, Facebook has taken over Zoom. And if you're a Facebook user, uh, you can actually have uh, pretty much like Zoom capabilities. You can speak to a number of Facebook customers. So I got to tell you right now, being that most of people are in Facebook, definitely Zoom will be the platform to go. So, I mean, um, not to be the one like, hey, Zoom is the best technology, but it's the one that has the most customers right now. And as a smart consumer, that would tell you that's where you want to go, where most people are signing up. Okay. Alex, you were starting to talk? Yep, you're still muted, buddy. You're muted. Let me say something. Okay, Mike. While we're unmuting <laughs> okay. Alex. Um, it is important that... Alex, you're muted that you kind of experiment, try different ones before you commit. <clears throat> okay. Or commit, but keep on trying different ones. All right. All right. So now, Alex, that was a <laughs> profound <laughs> thing that you just said, um, and now you can say something else. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I wanted to go back, too, and touch on a little bit of what Xavier was talking about with the, um, uh, the video with the finance process. Um, you know, dealers are a very adaptable group, um, and they take things that they come and make things happen. And it's if a dealer wants to get their salespeople doing live chat video, they can get their salespeople doing live chat video. Um, the biggest challenge is getting finance for dealers to switch that mindset um, and get their finance manager out of their desk in front of a video. Um, it was interesting your comment on Facebook uh, taking over Zoom. Um, there is a, um, I saw a um, Facebook, um, the, a survey that they did a while back um, just before COVID uh, hit, but their survey showed that 45% of auto consumers ages 18 to 34 say they would complete their entire automil automobile purchase online if they could. That's a pretty big number, and that's before COVID just hit. So there is definitely an interest in um, getting the process from, hey, I want to buy a car, to, okay, here's your delivery. Customers want to get that online. Right. Yes. Mike? Um, to kind of piggyback on that, and I know you and I spoke about it the other day, um, since COVID-19, I mean, people are looking for several things right now. Um, they're looking for security. They're looking for safety. And they're also looking for transparency. Okay. Um, I think it's really, really important that we offer that to them. And also uh, an upgraded number on people that want to do their business, complete their business online. That was num that number was a, l a little bit over seven out of ten buyers. Remember that number, Mark? I do. I do. Yeah, yeah it's a big number, and and that number is growing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know, as the population shift continues, as that eighteen to thirty five demographic moves on up through the lifespan of a population, right. this is just going to keep growing. This is just going to keep growing. I Another thing that I want to add, guys, to the finance side is that. Please, if your uh, capture lender is offering really good finance rates, make sure that you pitch it to every single one of your cash customers. If your business managers are giving you pushback, you give them three times the pushback. Customers are interested in 0% loans. Uh, we're seeing a definitely, definitely a, a climb up in loans right now when, when you are telling the customer what is the benefit of them doing it. Because as you guys know, all of us in this room, there are many benefits to doing 0% with a 90-day deferment, correct? Uh, there's, it's literally just a cash purchase for us and definitely something that could uh, raise a lot of value. One. Second, to Alex's point, yeah, the culture has to change. If you have a business manager who is not willing to meet your customer where they're at, uh, it is time that we start looking, <laughs> I would say, at our roster and making sure we start making changes either in culture or people. And the reason being because that shifting culture has happened nowadays and the customers are going to be expecting more, no less. As, a, as, as the whole panel has said, as we keep on getting better in the technology, as we keep on improving, 
as we, as we, you're going to start seeing winners on this arena, okay? What's going to happen, guys, is some of you guys with your old customs or whatever are going to just die off. So let's ensure that right now that we're all at the same level because we're all healing or coming back from the situation. Start learning and start getting better. And if you need more assistance, you definitely have the support of all the, pan of all the panel right here. Okay. All right. So kind of on that mode, let's, I, I want to give everyone the chance for a final um, comment. So I'm going to start off that process off with Ron. We'll let Ron give his final comments and thoughts first. Well, just like um, final comments to the jury. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just anything, anything right now, because we're ready for the, the the final pitch. You know, I think that the solutions provided today are things that if you can embrace, if you can take this technology and embrace the solution, and become develop a certain degree of mastery with these solutions, you can dominate the landscape in your dealership because there isn't a lot of competition. Most of the people, most of the personnel are not going to do this. Requires too much effort, requires equipment, requires technology. And most people, unfortunately, are a bit lazy. So if we can give you the technology and you can embrace the solution, you're going to be more su successful in spite of yourself. I don't know about you, but when I sold cars, I had to make a living. Hmm. I had young children growing up. I had, to, I had to sell cars. You know, I, I would get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, someone's going to pay for me getting out of bed today. And I go to work with the mindset that, you know, and, and I used to say, if I can greet a customer in the morning, spend the day with them and deliver that car at five o'clock in the afternoon, but I could do that. 24 days of the month, I'm a happy guy. Yeah. So think about the solutions provided. And if you need any other further discussion, we're all available. Call us up, phone numbers, email addresses, face-to-face, -face, whatever you want to do. Do you want to do a, a Facebook meeting? Do you want to do a, um, a, a YouTube meeting? Whatever it is, let's do it. I mean, right. I'm anxious to learn and get better. I think you should be anxious to learn to get better every single day. Because if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And someone out there is getting better. That's your competition. So I want to be competitive. And if I'm going to be, I may not win every race, but I can tell you that I'm going to win, place, or show. Very nice. Alex, what about you? Final comments. Yeah, you know, uh, the COVID has taken away um, the, uh, the great separate, I say the great separate, it might be the wrong terminology, but it's taken away uh, facilities from dealerships. So um, before when websites first started coming out, it was the great equalizer. And now that's back. How well are the customers online with video? How well are their processes to get their um, salespeople interacting with their customers? Because um, uh, their nice facility is not there anymore to utilize. So their processes and procedures are more amplified now more than ever, I think. Um, and how do you get in front of the customer in a way that's different than your competition? Um, and this is one way to do it. Okay. Mike? Uh, I think what we're, what we're looking at here is there's going to be a huge transition. Um, it's going to take its toll. All right. Uh, the people that are committed to, to, making the changes necessary are definitely, they're going to be the winners. And if you, if you haven't got your mind made up of how you're going to go about doing this, you're going to get left in the dust. So my, uh, my advice, I guess, is let's take advantage of the opportunity to learn and to role play and to express ourselves. And if you need a, uh, a goal to, uh, to shoot for, uh, if nothing else, uh, you know, call us. We'll, sh we'll, we'll kind of walk you through some stuff. Um, I'm, I'm sorry for the blatant commercialism, but it's an absolute fact. If, if, you, if you think you could do this all on your own, well, good luck. Okay. Mark? And my, uh, Mike, you won't take half a deal, will you? I, no, I won't take a half a deal. I'll, I'll skate you on the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so... 
I, I would say technology, embrace it. Embrace the technology. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell a quick story to emphasize this. A good friend of mine who's a Chevy dealer in the Detroit metro area sold just shy of 50 cars, new cars, last month, which is substantially off from where they usually are. They're usually over 100 cars a month. Uh, their closest competitor was in the single digits. They didn't even sell 10 cars last month. Now, keep in mind, in Michigan, they were closed part of the month. Um, but they didn't sell 10 cars. And the difference, the substantial difference, is the guy that sold just shy of 50 cars embraced the technology. The other guy, who was an extremely successful dealer, has not embraced the technology and has, and has the adage or the, the whole thought process that things are going to go back to normal. Not I say there's a new normal. They do. <laughs> Embrace the technology. Okay. Xavier, final thoughts? Absolutely on that end. Stop making excuses, guys. It's not going to go away. And the reason why I sound so confident telling you that, I see so many of business managers who are doing $25,000, $3,000 PBR who are hiding, okay? And they shouldn't. Uh, and on the other hand, I'm seeing these guys who were doing $800, $700 PVR, embracing the technology, man. hitting it hard, doing it well, and they're doing $1,800, $1,900. And, you know, I'm not here to advertise it, but honestly, there is no secret sauce. They're just getting it done. They're practicing. They're calling at the customers. They're sitting down with us on, on, on these uh, role plays that we do. They're making sure the computer works. I'm making sure they're camera ready, guys. Okay, that's that's a new thing. Okay, you got to make sure you look good from here up. <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's gonna be my last thoughts. Embrace it. it. It's fun. At the beginning, it's it's it, it, uh, it's it's anxiety. It's scary. Uh, oh, what what people are gonna think? Absolutely nothing. It's business as usual. Just sell yourself. Sell the product that you want to sell, and life will be good. Nice. Hey, Mark. So, one other comment. If you can embrace this technology right here. You've got 80% of it licked. That's right. This, That's, this is the technology right here. The apps that are available, the way that you can communicate. Think about this. We used to watch uh, Star Wars or watch um, some of the Star Trek uh, episodes and beam me up, Scotty. That technology is here right now. So yes, it this is. is your. This is 80% of the fight, and it's not even a fight. Embrace it. So... Just to recap what all you said in, in very concise one word, practice to learn, to get better at what you're doing, be transparent in your dealing, be a consultant, lose, get over your fear of any technology you're not using, and be a consultant. Work with the customer, build relationship. Um, and then if you can do those things, the technology will take care of itself. Um, yeah, you do have to install cameras. Yeah, you do have to do that infrastructure, but that's the easy part. The hard part of those is, is those other things. So with that, we're going to go back to our slideshow in closing. So we talked about all of those things. So again, on the self-analysis, we started off by having you rate yourself on your website, capturing your uh, and fulfilling your customer leads, your phone system, your texting and some messaging, video, both online and live, virtual paperwork, and offsite delivery. So again, I just want to come back to that because again, hopefully we answered questions to help you get started on improving yourself on those um, technologies. Now again, we didn't answer very many questions from the chat. Here's what I'm going to promise you though. If you have any questions, Put them in the check box, and one of us will reach out to you within the next day. So please put your questions in the chat. We will respond. We will get an answer to you um, because, again, we had such a great discussion going. I didn't want to interrupt the flow um, with the questions. So I do see the questions. We will get to them. We will send you an answer. We will contact you with an answer very quickly. So, again, my promise was, to help you learn how to navigate the challenges with technology you face today. I think we did a great job uh, in doing so.
But understand that those keys, those answers are just the beginning. Um, we do have ways that can help you adapt and overcome those challenges. Um, if you want to get more information, please let us know. And we will be very happy to help you. As Mike so eloquently said, he'll take your whole deal, not just part of it. Um, but, you know, we, we, we will help you. And we operate both online, face-to-face, -face, um, using this technology. Um, and then when the world lets us, uh, if you want us to, we'll be face-to-face. -face. So, um, Again, just to recap the panel, I um, have been in the business for a long time and I've coached over 100,000 professionals. Um, Alex is an automotive industrial enthusiast, franchise independent dealership owner um, since 77. He currently operates, however, um, Michigan Dealer Service, working with dealerships of all sizes and brands. Mark started his career building Cadillacs on the, the, the factory floor. He's worked up from there to being one of the leading uh, experts on sales. He's recently worked on the digital side of the business and was national sales director there. Mike um, provides thought provoking training. He's an expert on not just sales, but leasing. If you need to know anything about leasing, Mike is the guy to go to. Ron is one of the nation's premier sales management and motivational trainers. He's been doing that way since the dark ages in 86. Um, in that time, he constantly pursued ways to improve selling and attitudes. He has been at various positions of sales and management, um, and he is really hands-on, and you heard him talk. He does an outstanding job. Lastly, but not least, Xavier is a senior district manager for JMA, and a and he has coached and assisted his dealer partners throughout uh, the United States and Canada in improving what they do and how much money they make in doing it. So here's our contact information. I'll leave this on the screen momentarily. You can uh, reach all of us through that one phone number. Um, if you want someone in particular, we'll move you to that person. But that's the, 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 the main phone number. And then you have our LinkedIn contact information on the screen there. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to start a communication, uh, a conversation with all of you about this technology. So I want to thank you. My name again is Mark Banfield. Band Faith Sales System, and we hope we have done what we set out to do, which give you great information. Let us know. Um, call us. Contact us. Um, leave it in the chat box. But until next time, and there will be a next time, uh, thank you for attending. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time.